One day, Thomas was waiting at the junction when a bus came into the yard. Hello, said Thomas. Who are you? I'm Bertie. Who are you? I'm Thomas. I run this line. So you're Thomas. Ah, I remember now. You stuck in the snow. I took your passengers and Terence pulled you out. I've come to help you with your passengers today. Help me, said Thomas, going blue and ever and letting off steam. I can go faster than you. You can't. I can. I'll race you, said Bertie. Their drivers agreed. The station master said, Are you ready? Go. And they were off. Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Thomas was running well, but he did not hurry. Why don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? called Annie and Clarabelle anxiously. Wait and see. Wait and see, hissed Thomas. He's a long way ahead. He's a long way ahead, they wailed. But Thomas didn't mind. He'd remembered the level crossing. There was Bertie fuming at the gate, while they sailed gaily through. Goodbye, Bertie, called Thomas. The road left the railway and went through the village, so they couldn't see Bertie. They stopped at the station. Peep, pip, peep, quickly, please, called Thomas. Everybody got out quickly. The guard whistled, and off they went. Come along, come along, sang Thomas. We're coming along, we're coming along, called Ali and Clarabelle. Hurry, 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 panted Thomas, looking straight ahead. Then he whistled shrilly in horror, for Bertie was crossing the bridge over the railway, tooting triumphantly on his horn. Oh, dearie me, oh, dearie me, groaned Thomas. He's a long way in front, he's a long way in front, wailed Annie and Clarabelle. Steady, Thomas, said his driver. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet, echoed Annie and Clarabelle. We'll do it. We'll do it, panted Thomas bravely. Oh, bother, there's a station. As he stopped, he heard a toot. Goodbye, Thomas, you must be tired. Silly, I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Goodbye. The next station was by the river. They got there quickly, but the signal was up. Oh, dear, thought Thomas, we've lost. But he felt better after a drink. Then James got on through with a goods train, and the signal dropped, showing the line was clear. Hurrah, we're off! Hurrah, we're off! puffed Thomas gaily. As they rumbled over the bridge, they heard an impatient toot toot, and there was Bertie waiting at a red light, while cars and lorries crossed the narrow bridge in the opposite direction. Road and railway ran up the valley side by side, and a stream tumbled in between. Thomas had not crossed the bridge when Bertie started with a roar, and soon shot ahead. Excited passers in train and bus cheered and shouted across the valley. Now Thomas reached his full speed, and foot by foot, yard by yard, he gained. So they were running level. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Slowly but surely he drew ahead. Till whistling triumphantly, he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. I've done it! I've done it! panted Thomas in the tunnel. We've done it! Hooray! We've done it! Hooray! chattered Annie and Carvel and whistling proudly. They rushed out of the tunnel and into the last station. The passengers gave Thomas three cheers and told the stationmaster and the porters all about the race. When Bertie came in, they gave me three cheers too. Well done, Thomas, said Bertie. That was fun. But you beat you over that hill. I shall have to grow wings and be an aeroplane. Thomas and Bertie now keep each other very busy. Bertie finds people in the village who want to go by train and takes them to Thomas. While Thomas brings people to the station for Bertie to take home. They often talk about their race. But Bertie's passengers don't like being bounced in peas in a frying pan. And the fat controller has warned Thomas about what happens to engines who race at high speeds. So, although, between you and me, they would like to have another race, I don't think they ever will. <laughs> <laughs>